Well, hello everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Um, we are uh, excited uh, to have you join us today via this live stream. And if you couldn't, we want to just thank you for taking the time to watch it afterwards. Uh, today's show is a very exciting one, at least exciting from the perspective that we are going to show at the end of the day that a book that more than 1.6 to 1.7 billion Muslims, basically followers of Islam, think and believe it is a book inspired by a God that they worship, when in fact today we are going to prove without a shadow of a doubt that it is actually a source from no other than Satan himself, evidenced by the fact that it has portions that were tainted by Satan, evidence from their own sources, meaning Islamic sources that we are going to bring to your attention and expose. We're obviously, we're talking about something called the Satanic Verses. And with me here, no other than our dear brother, Rob Christian, uh, to join me in this effort to expose this. And I use his words, maybe once and for all, hopefully we want to bury uh, the ha uh, this uh, issue and help our Muslims, uh, our Muslim friends and families uh, to realize that there is no truth found in that book. The only truth is in Christ himself. Brother, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us. Thank you, brother, for having me again. Uh, I'm really blessed to be here. It's an honor to be here with my dear brother, Al Fadi from Sira International. Uh, God bless you, your ministry, your family, your loved ones, and the audience who are watching. I hope that many people will invite and share the link to this live show because the, the new evidence that we're going to present uh, is so damaging. It's new material, guys, that I really have to share with everybody, with everyone. So I hope that many people uh, will share this uh, live show later or now uh, so that many Muslims can be helped. We need to help these people. We cannot save them because only God can, but Amen. we need to help them to show that Muhammad was, in the end, you don't, you don't like it, you don't, you like it, you don't like it. You have to deal with the fact that the satanic verses, that's the main topic of today, is a historical fact. It's an authentic story that no Muslim can uh, refute. And today uh, we're going to present the new material and Lord willing, it will cause a huge chain reaction uh, for many Muslims to leave this man-made cult. Amen. And, and really, uh, just a, a quick brief background, people, you can go and Google this. Um, uh, there is a, an author back in 1885, I think, give or take, uh, William Weir. He's the one who coined this term, Satanic Verses. And the idea is this, that uh, supposedly, according to the traditions, that uh, Muhammad claimed that he has received revelation endorsing the worship of three idol goddesses, Alat, Al Uzza, or Manat. And on account of this, his tribe, Quraysh, was really touched by this, realizing now that the God of Muhammad accepts their goddesses, and therefore they were willing now to unite with him or at least endorse his religion, given uh, the fact that the worship of their idol or their goddesses is uh, basically permitted. And the idea uh, in the Quran was that these goddesses can continue to intercede on behalf of the pagan, the idolaters. Because usually the worship of idolatry means that you're worshiping a deity through this rock or th through this uh, idol or uh, whatever shape it is. And somehow uh, Muhammad endorsed that. Then later Muhammad recanted that and says, no, 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 it was Satan actually who made me think that it was Gabriel who was revealing this verse to me but I was rebuked by Gabriel, and now I have to make modifications to this. And this is, of course, found in the Quran. And on account of this came other revelations stating that Satan does this to all other prophets and got, that God can clean up the mess, and he knows best. I don't know how he knows best when Satan can actually trump his <laughs> word anyway. All that to say, this is the background story. This is the traditional story reported, by the way, in a number of biography reported by Al-Waqidi, reported by Ibn Ishaq, reported by Ibn Sa'd, among uh, also other names like Al-Tabari. But today we're going to show some of the new movements, the modern movement and views that are trying to distance themselves, as always, of course, 
from these kind of stories. And in some account, which I'll let uh, Rob deal with it, um, they try to even redefine um, uh, certain terms. What a surprise, obviously. Uh, so it's the, uh, the miracle of reinterpretation, as David Wood, may peace be upon him, would say. All that to say is that this is the background story. And now I'm going to let Rob take us through a journey of how we're going to decimate both the traditional story and even the attempt to try to cover up that. Go ahead, brother. Thank you, brother. If it's okay for me to share my screen and so that people Absolutely. can see I'll my side right of... Yeah. yeah, perfect. Again, uh, everybody who just joined, uh, welcome. God bless you. Again, uh, brother El Fadi, God bless your ministry. Thank you for having me. Uh, this is going to be another opportunity pres to present our new evidence, the new evidence that I found in the Arabic Muslim books. And uh, it's a blessing to have uh, also brother El Fadi here so he can confirm what is uh, will be shown on the screen. Uh, from the Islamic books, because most books, don't forget, most books are still not translated. And Lord willing, if the Lord wills, if our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ wills, he want me to continue what I'm doing. I'm going to do more damage in the future. As more we have time, the more we can do this. And if the Lord wills, I can do this full-time, full-time ministry, then I will take a, a bigger dive in the Islamic books and Lord willing, we can find many more damaging uh, new evidence that we can share uh, on the World Wide Web. So again, thank you for having me, brother. God bless you. And um, let us do this. As you see on the screen, the question of today is, or the top topic of today is, the $1 million question. Are the satanic verses incident? Is it a fake story, is it a fabrication or is it a real authentic historical event in the life of the Prophet of Islam, Muhammad? So let us start. Without further ado, let us start. Everybody must have heard by now of the guy who wrote a book which became one of the bestsellers uh, back in the 80s. Correct me if I'm wrong, brother. Uh, Salman Rushdie. Salman Rushdie made a, a comment and he said, a quote, and I quote, he said, Prophet Muhammad would have no objection to the satanic verses. Meaning if Muhammad would be alive today, he would have not objected against it because it is an authentic story that happened, an auth authentic incident that happened in the life of Muhammad. But modern Muslims today, modern Muslims are too ashamed they understand the consequences of such a disaster that happened in the life of Muhammad. And the only thing they can do is do all kinds of mental gymnastics or cover up, right, to say that it is nothing but a fabrication. But today we have proof, Lord willing, we can present the proof, the evidence that I found uh, for everybody to see. And I really want to ask everybody to share today's live show. Let it go viral, all for the glory of Christ. So this is an introduction, guys. Let us start with the classical scholars. And the other day I had a conversation on Skype with uh, brother Sam Shamoun. And he said, please, uh, you know, uh, I want you to do live, sh live shows or videos about what the classical scholars say. And you'll see today, uh, guys, I don't need the classical scholars. I mean, Ibn Taymiyyah, Shaykh al-Islam himself, Ibn, the Ibn Taymiyyah that... For example, uh, or for example, the, the the Salafi Muslims, they call him their Sheikh. He's Sheikh Fadilat al Sheikh, uh, Sheikh al Islam Ibn Taymiyyah. So this guy, yeah, he's, he's the Taymiyyah. clerk. Yeah. He's, he's the head kahuna for for the religion. Sheikh yeah. al Islam is a big title. Exactly, exactly. He's he's huge, guys. You have no idea how important uh, Ibn Taymiyyah is in Islam. He's basically. If, uh, if I'm not mistaken, he's the teacher of Ibn Kathir, right, uh, Brother Al Fadi? He was the yes, teacher. Yes, Ibn yeah. Kathir and also a number of other uh, reputable scholars, uh, for instance. All right. So, what did Ibn Taymiyyah, a classical, a giant of Islam, what did he say about the satanic verses? What did he say? And what do modern people like Sheikh Al Albani that you see here, who became famous, a modern scholar of today, right, who basically died recently, let us call it recently, he 
was against it, and he called it a fabrication, right? So the classical scholars, like Ibn Taymiyyah, he believed in the authenticity of the satanic verses. He believed that it was a fact in the life of Muhammad. It happened. But modern scholars who are too ashamed about the idea that Muhammad delivered satanic verses that he got from Satan himself, that very day Muhammad became the prophet of Satan, delivering satanic verses. And how did the satanic verses, how, 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 how did he present them to the Meccans, the Quraysh, the pagans who worshipped idols? He told them, These are the high exalted cranes, meaning the bird idols. And their intercession is hoped for. And as the brother already mentioned, when the Quraysh, the Meccan Quraysh, the tribe of Muhammad himself, when they heard these beautiful words about their idols, they loved Muhammad for it. And they were happy and pleased with Muhammad. Look, Muhammad is saying beautiful stuff about our idols. Thank you, Muhammad. And Muhammad bowed down. He prostrated. He did sujood. All the pagans do sujood, prostration, and active worship, and all the Muslims who were there. And if you go to Sayyid al-Bukhari, you will see even that the jinn, did the same. So everybody that day became a mushrik, right? Became an idol worshiper. So modern Muslims like Al Albani, they call it a fabrication. But today you will see that he's nothing but a liar. And today, yeah, the guy is already dead. But I'm going to end his career anyway. And I have the evidence today. And I'm God forbid, I'm not trying to brag, guys, but that's what I found today. And I need to share this with everybody on the World Wide Web. And I want everybody, please, for the love of Christ. Please share this video. It must go viral. Here's what Ibn Taymiyyah, a classical scholar that we mentioned in the beginning. Here's what he said. This is the classical scholar. This is Shaykh al-Islam, the giant himself. Look what he said. Ibn Taymiyyah, against the majoritarian opinion of the scholars of this day, so against the modern scholars like Albani and Fifi and, uh, and, and, and uh, all, all these people who claim to be scholars, he actually accepted the historicity of the satanic verses. DC. So Ibn Taymiyyah believed in it. But the two embarrassed Muslims, the modern Muslims of today, they call it a fabrication. So Ibn Taymiyyah accepted it as something wholly consonant, sorry if I'm butchering the English guys, with Muhammad's status and mission as the messenger of Allah. Ibn Taymiyyah asserted that belief in the incident was the position of the early Muslims, the Salaf, right? The Salaf the early Muslims, and thus the original and authentic truth of the incident called the satanic verses. And you can find this information in, uh, in the book of Shahab Ahmad, uh, Ibn Taymiyyah. The book co is called Ibn Taymiyyah and the Satanic Verses, written in the year 1998, page 122. So that's what Ibn Taymiyyah believed. He believed that the satanic verses were a historical fact. So if, the, if, if one of the giants believe that it's a fact, a classical giant, what about the liars today who are too embarrassed about it? Here is another giant. Now, brother, can you tell us who Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani is? Well, I mean, he's one of those Islamic scholars uh, that uh, are extremely uh, approved of and accepted, and he has to do with hadith also. Indeed. Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani, guys, I made a video about it, about him, sorry, and I exposed him because he's the one who made the hadith famous about the adult breastfeeding. Yeah, and he's uh, the one who the wrote the Al-Bukhari, basically. He worked yeah. on Al-Bukhari collection. Exactly. He wrote uh, Fath al-Bari, Fath al-Bari, Fi Sharh Sahih al-Bukhari, meaning the commentary, the huge, famous commentary, multi-volume collection. Right, uh, that uh, Sayyid Bukhari wrote. He wrote also a huge, huge book about it, basically multi volume, and he was explaining Sahih al Bukhari. But Ibn Hajar is another scumbag who I recently exposed, Brother Al Fadi, for making a rejected, fabricated hadith by Al Waqiri. Because remember, Al Waqiri is considered to be a fabricator and liar in the Sunni world. So Ibn Hajar is another scumbag, another hypocrite. But anyway, this guy who Muslims consider to be a giant, look what he said about the satanic verses. Ibn Hajar, the Ibn Hajar, 
another Sheikh al Islam. He recognized the authority on traditions, insists on the truth of this report, and says, and I quote, Ibn Hajar said, as we have mentioned above, three of its chains of narrators satisfy the conditions required for an authentic report. Do you see it? So Ibn Hajar believed, he believed that the satanic verses were a 100% historical fact in the life of Muhammad. And this is, you can see on the bottom of the screen, you can see the and, source. And here's what I want to say. I mean, I want to remind people of this. Um, Ibn Hajr al-Asqalani basically studied a collection by Bukhari that was written 240 years after the time of Muhammad. So he came after that and still endorsed it, which mean the knowledge about the story lasted for at least a couple of hundred years. It was acceptable. It was endorsed and it was considered to be authentic. So I laugh when I hear modern Islamic scholar wants to deny now everything that happened in the beginning, which basically uh, by their own admission, like Al-Albani, everything was a lie and now somehow received an enlightenment to uh, correct the mistakes. So basically you can say brother Al-Fadi, that's what uh, brother Al-Fadi is also uh, confirming. Modern Muslims or modern Muslim scholars today, they have to call their Giants of Islam like Ibn Taymiyyah, we showed you Ibn Taymiyyah, we, we are showing you now Ibn Hajar on the screen, they have to call the old school scholars, the daddies of daddies of Islam, they call them liars and deceivers, can you imagine, they throw Ibn Hajar, they throw Ibn Taymiyyah under the bus, just to tell you, well the satanic verses is a fabrication, so in the end, who should we believe, the modern Young boys of today like Al-Albani or someone like Ibn Hajar and Ibn Taymiyyah. Do you uh, want to add something on top of this, uh, brother, before I continue? Oh, no, brother. Keep going. You're doing a great job. All right. So that's what the classical scholars used to believe, guys, right? As an introduction. That's what the classical scholars used to believe. They believed that the satanic verses was authentic. They had no issues with it. Even Muhammad, if he would have been alive today, Muhammad, the prophet of Islam, would have no objection against the satanic verses incident that happened with him, him and Satan, Satan delivering the satanic verses on his tongue, telling him to give that to the people. Muhammad not knowing the difference between Allah and Satan, not knowing the difference between satanic revelation and the Quran. And he gave the Quraysh these are the exalted high cranes, the bird idols, and their intercession is hoped for. All right, let us continue. Now, a lot of people, a lot of people don't know that there are at least two satanic incidents that happened in the life of Muhammad. Two. Guys, and I don't want you to confuse those two with, let's say, uh, the black magic spell that uh, was cast on Muhammad because some guy, some enemy of Muhammad plucked a hair out of his comb and he cast a black spell. Uh, that's a different topic. I'm speaking, I'm talking about the satanic verses. There were two, but the number one that you see here on the screen is the most uh, famous one. And a lot of Muslims don't know about the second one, but today in my live show, maybe we can do that later in the future, brother. But today is about the first one. So when Muhammad was reading Surah Al-Najm, which is chapter 53, Surah Al-Najm, Satan comes in between and he gives him uh, the satanic verses. Right? This is the most famous one, as you see. But there is a second one. And I made a video about it. Maybe we can do another show about it, brother. Uh, but the second one is when Absolutely. Muhammad was... yeah. When Muhammad was reading Surat Ar-Rum, many people don't know about this incident, but Lord willing, we can make this one famous too. So two incidents, two different incidents that happened in the life of Muhammad. Let us today only focus on the most famous one, the most well-known one, Surat and najm right? When Muhammad was reciting Surat and najm which is chapter 53, Satan comes in between and delivers or give the satanic verses on his tongue and Muhammad delivers the satanic verses to the Quraysh of Mecca, the pagans, when they were really happy when they heard Muhammad saying beautiful stuff about their idols. 
Now, guys, focus on number one, which is Surat and Najm incident. Now, as a information, right? Who that Satan was? Who was that? Uh, what what did Satan do with Muhammad? How did he look like? If we go to a book like this one, uh, this is Fath al Bayan fi Maqasid al Quran, right? Fath al Bayan, and this is the book that you see here. You can download this book. You can uh, find it on 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 the internet. And here is a, uh, a a part of the book. Let me scroll up. You will see here. What is the page number, brother? Three hundred and seventy-five, right? Just yes. to confirm. Three seventy-five, exactly. Three seventy-five, guys. Three seventy-five of this book that you see here. Just to understand what was happening with Muhammad. If we scroll down, and our brother, he can confirm. Maybe you want to read it and translate, brother. This so uh, I'm going to read the underline, which is based on Surah Ash-Shu'ara, verse 210. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read in Arabic. قال عطاء يريد بالشيطان الشيطان الأبيض الذي كان يأتي النبي صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم في سورة جبريل يريد أن يفتنه. So uh, a person by the name Ata says that the uh, intent here in this verse which says وما تنزلت به الشياطين meaning the Satan or the demons did not really cast it down meaning the Quran. The intent here saying it was reference to the white Satan. Somebody the was known as Satan. Satan. Yeah. Did you catch it, guys? Yeah. So That's Muhammad it. was getting, uh, <laughs> it was being visited by Satan, right? That was basically coming to Muhammad. This white fellow, look at this, uh, this cute Satan, brother. Yeah. Cute and, and white brother, Satan, right? Yeah. I want to emphasize something. Uh, he's described as the, the white one or white Satan who was masquerading as gabriel long and behold paul wow. was inspired to say exactly the same thing about satan in second corinthians 11 13 and 14 that satan can masquerade as the angel of light white get it yes exactly perfect so in other words again guys just for you to understand satan himself and he had a nickname. He, he was called the White One. The White One, Satan himself, used to come to Muhammad in the shape of Jibreel. So the, this Satan, this demon, could shape shift and make himself look like Jibreel. And Muhammad had no idea, no clue that this was Satan, not Jibreel. So <laughs> this is what the Islamic books are saying. The White One, al Abyad used to come in the shape of Jibreel and giving him satanic verses. And as a reaction, Allah himself in the Quran, we, we don't believe there's something called Allah, but it's Muhammad. As, you know, as, ever, uh, as, 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 a, as a defense, we can go, for example, to chapter 22, Surah Al-Hajj, that is on the screen, Ayah 52. Look what it says. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِكَ مِنْ رَسُولٍ وَلَا نَبِيٍ إِلَّا إِذَا what does that mean? If we go to the translation, you'll understand that Muhammad, because he knew he got busted, he knew that he delivered satanic verses. He gave, he delivered the satanic verses from Satan to the pagans. Look what the argument of Muhammad was in the Quran. So Muhammad had to defend himself. Because he got busted. Look what he says. And all the noble messengers or prophets whom we send before you, it occurred with all of them. So Muhammad needs to lie about Abraham. He needs to lie about Jesus. He needs to lie about all the prophets, supposedly, because it happened to him. So all of them uh, fell for the tricks of Satan. That's what Muhammad is saying in his Quran. Lying. Of course, this is nothing but a lie. Muhammad was the only one. And Allah was sleeping. Allah was too tired to protect him from Satan. That whenever the messengers recited the message, let's say the Torah, the Injil, uh, the Quran, the Zabur, whatever, the Quran, Satan included a bit from his own speech, the satanic verses, in their recitation, on their tongues, like Muhammad, to the people. So Allah then abrogates what Satan included. 
Yeah, brother, uh, let me let me just ask you a quick question. There are some people here uh, that are uh, you know asking if this book by Albani is available in English. I did find a site that was going through the book in English. Is it available in English? Are you aware of that? Uh, uh, not that I know of. No, I okay. I have only the Arabic right. version, and I can yeah. share the link uh, to the Arabic version. But that's it. <laughs> that's fine. I'm sorry, well, I mean, folks. Yeah. This is why you cannot qualify to deal with Muslims because you do not speak Arabic. And the Muslims, yeah. here is the the deal: they do not know how to read the Arabic. So don't worry. Both of you will be just fine. We'll try to find it to you in English. Uh, I'll I'll send the link to the source that I was referring to as well. Right now, I'll put it right here. Keep going, brother. Yeah. So. You see, the Quran is actually confirming the satanic verses because here Muhammad is in defense mode. He's basically saying, yeah, uh, you know, uh, I know that I delivered the satanic verses. That's what we can give a summary, right? A summary. But, you know, uh, it, it, it did not only happen to me. It happened to all the prophets of Allah. Do you see it? It happened to all of them. Whenever they want to deliver a message, let's say the Quran, uh, let's say uh, uh, the Injil, the Torah, the Zabur, the Psalms, uh, Satan always come in between. So do you see, guys, do you have any idea now how powerful Satan is in Islam? He could influence all the prophets of Allah and only in Islam, as you see. Only in Islam, Muhammad, uh, Muhammad is getting uh, confused by Satan. Muhammad could not handle Satan. Muhammad could not know the difference between Jibreel and Satan, not know the difference between the satanic verses and the Quran. And Muhammad, like uh, the scholars of today, right, is in defense mode and he needs to give his argument. All right. Uh, yeah, I, I know it happened to me, but all it happened to all the prophets. So he, he, he is not only in defense mode, he also needs to lie about all the prophets. Brother, do you want to add something? Uh, not at all, brother. Keep going. If I see something that is really, really, uh, uh, you know, interesting that I can make a comment on, I'll let you know. No problem. Keep going, brother. All right. So the Quran actually confirms the satanic verses and Muslims need to lie about it. So let us continue. Let us continue. So here are some issues, guys. Here are some issues. Modern Muslims today are too embarrassed and simply won't accept the fact that Muhammad delivered satanic verses. Or else Muslims have to deal with the damaging contradiction in the Quran. What is that contradiction? Allah in the Quran says to Satan, and it's on the screen, in chapter 15 of the Quran, ayah 42, you Satan, you Satan, will have no power over my servants, i.e. his prophets, including Muhammad, only over the ones who go astray and follow you. So if Basically, the argument is this. If Muhammad delivered satanic verses, if Muhammad became the prophet of Satan at that very moment, that means Muhammad is, is went astray. If Muhammad is astray, all the Muslims go astray, right? Because without Muhammad, there is no Islam. Without Muhammad, there are no Muslims. So how can they accept it? I understand them. Guys, I understand why Muslims have to reject the idea that Muhammad was tricked by Satan and he delivered the satanic verses, the Gharaniq, right? Tilka al-Gharaniq al-Ula, inna shafa'atahunna la turteja. So the Muslims are in trouble. I understand that because we have a huge contradiction in the Quran here, right? So they have to deny it. Modern Muslims today have to deny it because they know Muhammad created a huge problem, a huge dilemma for them, right? They know, they know. And I understand them why they are so triggered when we bring up this topic. Now here is the Muslim main argument, guys, to explain a way, just to explain it away. Away, brother, we don't like it. Let us explain away this disaster, which is the satanic versus incident in the life of their prophet Muhammad. How many times have you heard? Well, brother, the hadith is fabricated. Uh, brother, no, no, the hadith is da'if. Even if it's sahih, it's da'if. The hadith is mursal. The hadith is mursal. So anything that embarrasses their prophet, they have to reject it. Even if it's the best of the best of hadith, or even if it's, it's a Quranic ayah, they, they will say, no, 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 it's not. It doesn't say that RC. It doesn't say that Al-Fadi, right? So brother, especially the last part, the hadith is mursal. Can you explain to the audience what a mursal hadith is, brother? 
Absolutely. So a morsel hadith, basically, uh, let's talk about it this way. If you have a hadith, there is something called isnad, chain of narrations, meaning the people who are reporting it to each other. Technically speaking, a strong case can be made when Muhammad said something and a companion reported it first to someone else and then it goes from there. But sometimes you have hadith where you're, there is a link that is missing. And in this case, it is a companion that is missing. So in other words, one of the followers of the companions would mm -hmm. say, I heard or uh, Muhammad said so and so, but you have no proof that a companion is the one who heard it. So that's why they try to have, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, ho try to find holes in things like this, uh, you know, based on convenience. You know, if the hadith is not really good for the case of Muhammad or the Quran, they're going to try to use this as a loophole. But if it is amazingly something good that Muslims can benefit from, somehow it's okay that it's more so. So yes. it's kind of interesting, really, how they look at things like this. It's almost like you're saying Justin Martyr says that Jesus said this, 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 when you're saying, well, Justin Martyr wasn't living at the time of Jesus, or at least did not meet Jesus, how did he know? That's what they're trying to say. Exactly. So now you'll have an idea why uh, uh, they call it this especially. Uh, and I already uh, was talking about this with our brother before we started. Actually, the satanic verses, guys, the satanic verses incident, and please focus, guys, don't allow anyone to distract you in the live chat. The satanic versus incident has around five mursal hadith. What? Five mursal hadiths, right? Five mursal hadith. Five of them. And today I'm going to focus on one of the five. One of the five that we will find in Sheikh Al Albani's. Book. If I may make a comment, brother. Uh, someone here is saying that the meaning of morsel is uh, basically a sender or a transmitter. No, no, this is in a passive. This means it yes. was sent. It was sent. It was delivered. It was narrated by someone. So in other words, there is, there is a messenger in between the companion and uh, the one who narrated it. But we don't know who that person was, technically speaking. Yes. So, guys, I want you to, uh, if you didn't catch it, I need you to rewatch the live show to understand the difference between, uh, let's say, uh, uh, daif or rejected, fabricated or mursal, right? Mursal is uh, like the brother said, you need to understand what, what, what we are trying to say. If you did, if you missed it, you need to rewatch the video and then you will understand what it means. Or just Google it. What is a mursal hadith? And then you'll understand what we're trying to say. So, again, I'm going to... Choose one of the five. It's around five Mursal Hadith the, about the satanic verses. So I'm going to focus on one. And you will understand why. Now Muslims, guys, Muslims, actually, they idolize their shayukh. And it's true. They don't investigate if their shayukh are lying or not. And for example, here is a sheikh. A very, very, very respectful sheikh in Islam. He is a modern sheikh, not like Ibn Taymiyyah, uh, not like uh, Ibn Hajar. He, he died recently, and maybe you have heard of him. His name is Muhammad Nasruddin Al Albani. Al Albani, why, why is he called Al Albani? Because he's originally from Albania. <laughs> Coincidence, right? right? He's originally from Albania. Yeah. And he's a big deal. When he's I was studying deal, at, yeah. uh, uh, in uh, Islamic uh, studies and especially at Umm al Qura, he's a big deal. I mean, he can tell you this hadith is accepted or not. This is Sahih. Mm -hmm. And I always wonder, like, how did this guy who lived in uh, 14, uh, I mean, uh, 1300 years later after Muhammad can know what is right and what is wrong, what is acceptable, yeah. what is not? Yeah, but this guy died recently. He's a modern scholar, right? This guy is a new modern scholar. But he actually, what he uh, made his job, guys, out of it to... To become a scholar of hadith, al-Albani, he his expertise is basically uh, knowing if a hadith is da'if or maybe rejected or sahih or, or hasan. So basically that's what he was doing. He was visiting, there was a local uh, uh, bookshop. I read a little bit about his life. There was a small local bookshop and he used to go there and he kept going there and he stayed for hours and hours. He even became uh, almost blind Right, he, he became almost blind because he was reading so much. And he wrote many books, 
right? He wrote many books. And one of his books is the book that we're going to talk about. And it's the book of about the satanic verses about the Gharaniq, right? So they, Muslims today, they use him because he became an authority about uh, the hadith, right? Oh, he's a an, uh, an hadith expert. Let us put it this way. Do you want to add something, brother? No, no, not at all. I'm just uh, showing yeah. people basically this, emphasizing his picture for them. Yeah. So this is, again, Muhammad Nasruddin al-Albani. And guys, mark my words. Today, I'm going to use him as an example. And I'm going, I know the guy's dead. He died recently, basically. But I'm going to ex expose him. And I'm going to end his career. And uh, today is the proof that no Muslim who is watching all the video will reach him. This video of today will reach him. You should never, ever accept Al-Albani as your imam because today I'm going to prove to everybody that he is a deceiver, simply another liar and a deceiver like most imams and shiuch. And I'm getting yeah. a small echo, brother. Uh, what my brother is saying yeah. is that this is another story that has holes in it. <laughs> exactly. So this guy... Today, guys, I'm going to prove to you that he's another deceiver. And watch. Muslims, they will say the following. I picked this comment, guys, that I found on the World Wide Web, on the Internet, from a Muslim who said, and I quote, Sheikh al-Albani, this guy that you see here on the screen, Sheikh al-Albani, the same guy, in his book, Nasb al-Majaniq li Nasb Qissat al-Gharaniq, so that's the book of Albani that he wrote, he says, and he continues, the Muslim saying, Al-Albani, Shaykh Al-Albani extracted all the hadiths concerning this lie. They call the satanic verses a lie. Modern Muslims, what do you expect? He, is, he's, he extracted all the hadiths concerning this lie, the satanic verses, and proved them to be unauthentic, weak, life, and fake, rejected, right? Uh, fabrication. So according to Al-Albani, and Muslims are proud about him, and uh, by the way, Sister Farida from Farida Response, he uh, he's actually a fanboy of Sheikh Al Albani. And uh, anybody who is following Sheikh Al Albani, after the today's live show becomes a scumbag like him, because you believe in a scumbag, you automatically you are a scumbag. So today I'm going to expose him and prove to everybody that he's nothing but a liar and a deceiver. And watch from now on, I want you to be really focused, guys, because I'm going to. Mention his book. We're going to take a big dive, like a, a huge dive, like a Yasser Al Qadi, who likes to, you know, uh, take a huge dive. We're going to do the same act, and we're going to we're, we're gonna do a deep dive. All right, we're gonna do a deep dive right now. Yeah, like this one, brother. When you do a deep dive, <laughs> we're going to take a deep dive. Let's see what what Sheikh Albani is going to say, and I'm going to prove his hypocrisy. And I'm going to end his career right here, right now. Watch. This is the book of Sheikh Al-Albani, brother. Sheikh Al-Albani, the modern scholar of today, the hero of Islam, right? Sheikh Al-Albani. And if you don't and, mind, brother, you yeah. don't mind, I want to say something. Uh, folks, I did post a link already to someone who was doing a study on this exact book, at least focusing on the Satanic Verses section. And one of our amazing moderators also reposted that link. So just to let everybody know. Go ahead, brother. Yeah. Guys, again, for the people who just joined, Sheikh Al-Albani, Sheikh Al-Albani, Sheikh Al-Albani, he wrote a book addressing the satanic verses. So the whole book that you see here on the screen, this is basically the front cover or whatever you want to call it. I took a screenshot. This book is only going to address the satanic verses that that happened in the life of Muhammad. Muhammad delivering satanic verses. And Sheikh Al-Albani wrote this book to basically show everybody, to prove to everybody that the satanic verses is a fabrication. That was his whole point behind this book. And this book became famous in the Arab world, right? Famous book, right, by the Sheikh Al-Albani. So this book, again, is written by Muhammad Nasruddin Al-Albani, and the book title is called Nasb Al-Majaniq, so it's about the Gharaniq, the satanic verses, the Gharaniq, the high cranes. Brother? Yeah? yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, basically, the meaning of the book is the destruction or basically the, the missiles that he's going to shoot into this story to destroy the lies. That's that's the intent behind the title here. So uh, he's definitely was uh, looking for more holes in the narrative. Exactly. So, guys, what Sheikh Albani is basically doing, he's throwing Ibn Taymiyyah under the bus, a classical scholar. He throws Ibn Hajar under the bus because the classical scholars believed in the authenticity of the satanic verses that happened in the life of Muhammad. They believed that it happened, truly happened. But here, this modern sheikh, Sheikh al-Albani, who became famous, especially for the Salafis, right, among the, the Sunni Muslims, they basically started to idealize him because he is the one to go to. He's the authority, he became the authority to go to when you want to refute or, or call the satanic verses a fabrication. So his book, he, he dedicated his book, like the brother just said, to destroy the argument that Muhammad delivered satanic verses. That's the whole point behind his book, right? That's correct. So here is, all right. So here is a page, brother. Here is a page from his book. This is page four. And here is page five. I put it for you. So basically, I, I don't want uh, to waste much time about it because it's Arabic, but I will give you a summary of what is being said on page four and five. From page four and five in his book that we just presented to you, a small summary of what is being said. We can read in Albani's book that Muslims from Pakistan, right? Muslims from Pakistan came to Sheikh Al-Albani. This happened, uh, guys. This has truly happened according to Sheikh Al-Albani in his life. Some Muslims came from Pakistan and asked him to address the story of the satanic verses, i.e. Al-Gharaniq. And he explains that he wrote his book, right? This book that we showed you, he wrote his book as argument against Al-Gharaniq, the satanic verses, as proof that the whole story is nothing but a fabrication against the prophet of Islam, Muhammad, right? And to remove, and here's the second point of, uh, basically, that's why he wrote the book. So, uh, point number two is, and to remove the doubts in the hearts of the Muslimin, the doubt in the hearts of the Muslimin about the historical authenticity of the satanic verses incident. So that no one, not a Christian like me, not a Christian like Al-Fadi, not the enemies of Islam, again, will bring it up as an argument against the so-called prophethood of the prophet of Islam, Muhammad. So what basically Al-Albani his argument is, the reason why he wrote this book is, and I quote, Inshallah, I will address this claim against our Prophet. And I will prove that it's nothing but a fabrication against our Prophet Muhammad. That's what basically in a nutshell Albani said in his book. Go ahead, brother. You want to add something? No, no. I mean, um, everything is fine. Okay. So guys, that's basically a summary of what is being said on page four and five. That's the reason he's giving the reason why he wrote this book, this famous book, right, that exploded basically in the Arab world. And any Muslim who, who, who is interested about uh, uh, the satanic verses, he needs to read Al-Albani's book. But, you know, how many times do we all tell you guys, when Muslims read, they, they actually don't read and understand what is being said in a book like this book. And we're going to present to you why much. So again, the book is called what? What is the book name? Nasb al-Majaniq li Nasb Qissat al-Gharaniq by Muhammad Nasruddin al-Albani, right? And let me let me repeat it in English now for people so they know how to look for it if they want. It's erecting yes. the catapults, erecting the catapults for destroying the story of the high flyers. Again, it's erecting the catapults for destroying the story of the high flyers. And I'm going to put it right here also in the chat uh, box for people if they want to go ahead and Google it. Exactly. Exactly. Perfect. So, guys, please take notes, take screenshots, because the information that we're going to provide to you today will no be no no muslim will dare to bring up because it will destroy muhammad's credibility as a prophet he will expose sheikh al-albani and today today is a day of days because i'm going to destroy sheikh al-albani and any muslim who believes that sheikh al-albani is a respectful 
uh, uh, Sheikh because he is nothing but another deceiver, this Sheikh Al Albani, trying to break up fabrications from his, himself, lies and deception to cover up the story. And here is why. Let us continue. We showed you pages uh, four and five. Now let us go to page 17, which is the damaging page in the entire book, brother. And I need your help because remember, I don't know Arabic. And I want you to, uh, to take this journey with me through page 17, brother, because here's the damaging yeah. part that I found. You speak Arabic, you read Arabic, but you don't, yeah, you do not understand Arabic. So that's, that's the only difference. That's yeah. what they always say, right? You don't know yeah. Arabic. Yeah, you don't know Arabic. You are, you yeah. make something. You know, everybody sometimes make reading mistakes. I, I, it's okay. I'm not God. I can make mistake. God forbid. So hey, I'm not an uh, Arabic uh, uh, scholar. I can make reading mistakes. Apparently, the Prophet of Islam also didn't know the difference between the Arabic of Jibril and the Arabic <laughs> of Satan. So yeah. I mean, even Allah sometimes make uh, reading mistakes or writing mistakes in His Quran, but it's okay. If Allah, it's okay if Allah does it, right? Because in the Quran, we can find tons and tons of uh, grammatical and spelling mistakes. But you know, but if Rob Christian or Christian prince make sometimes reading mistake, it, it, we cannot do that. But Allah and His Prophet, it's okay because Muhammad was a jahil, he was an illiterate, but you know, no problem. Anyway, let us continue, brother. And I want you, brother, to help me translate because remember, I don't know Arabic. So can you read what is being said on the on the uh, on this page and uh, tell everybody what it means? So you want me to read just the underlying stuff? Yeah, here is part of the Quran, right? And then okay. uh, here Sheikh, this is Sheikh Al Albani, guys. And remember, this entire book is about the satanic verses, and he's going to talk about the isnad, right? The isnad of the hadith, the one of the mursals, right? You remember, there are around again, guys. If you just joined, there are around five mursal hadith. Five Mursal Hadith about the Satanic verses. And he's going to address one of them. And he's going to talk about the guy who is inside the chain. So, brother, read with us. And I want you to pay attention, brother, to uh, Al Khatib fi uh, Al Khatib uh, Al Baghdadi and Al Atshi. Those two persons are really important to focus, uh, to pay attention uh, what is being said in the text. Go ahead, brother. Okay. So uh, can you give uh, uh, the reference to the first uh, verse for people so they know uh, which uh, surah uh, this came from? Yeah, uh, it says, uh, I think this is page 22, ayah 52, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, exactly. again, this is, this, is the, the, this is the chapter. This is the right ayah here. that we mentioned See, everybody, earlier. It's surah al-hajj. That's where it's coming from. So I'm reading about this particular verse right now. I just wanted him to show it to you because this was the response that supposedly was revealed to Muhammad because of chapter 53, verses 19 to 21, the so-called satanic verses debacle, okay? Yes. So now we're reading about uh, chapter uh, 22 right now, that yeah. verse that you just saw. Yeah, and, and so, the brother uh, is going to, to help me. And uh, just for, for uh, just sorry, brother. Again, this is the ayah, chapter 22, ayah 52. Wa ma illa Right? So, well, show, it in yeah. show it to them in English one more time because yeah. I want them to see it. Uh, so here's what it says. All the noble messengers or prophets whom we sent before you, speaking to Muhammad, right? That whenever they recited a message, basically wahi, you know, uh, uh, verses that came to them, yeah. Satan included a bit from his own speech into this recitation that's what it is so allah comes uh, back and clean the mess literally that's that's what he did uh yeah. so he kind of like abrogated obliterate you know removes so yeah. somehow allah allows satan to overpower his message and then he's like oops i need to come back now and fix it yeah, what brother, a yeah. Of, that's an and, amazing and, and, God, and really. at the same time exactly yeah. and at the same time Allah contradicts himself in another ayah because uh, in chapter 15 he says that Satan has no power over Muhammad Satan has no power over over any prophet any servant so Allah kept contradicting himself but what else is new so brother let us read the page page number 17 in the right. book of Al Albani guys this is the book of Albani I want you to be really focused. Our brother is going to read for us and he's going to translate. Go ahead, brother. So based on that verse, the person is saying, uh, I mean, uh, the one who's writing this Arabic says, I said, this is snad 
comes from a trustworthy man and all of them from the men of this particular discipline. By the way, there is a science of men, believe it or not. And that's yeah. how uh, Muslims can verify if this narrator is trustworthy or not. So that's what he's referring to. Mm -hmm. Except Ibn Arara. Mm -hmm. Ibn Arara. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there is nothing in them uh, uh, who desires basically to see in him uh, you know, see whatever is good in him, uh, except Abi Bakr, Muhammad bin Ali al Makri al Baghdadi. Okay, Waqad mm Auradahu -hmm. meaning and narrated it Al Khatib. Narrated okay. who is Al Khatib? Who is Al Khatib, brother? Does Al Khatib al Baghdadi, right? That's Khatib right. al Baghdadi, the one who wrote Tariq al Baghdad, Tariq right. Baghdad, right? Tariq Baghdad, yeah, the history He's of Baghdad. Giant. Yeah, he's a giant, that, yeah. right? Can you explain to 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 the uh, to the audience, brother, uh, why it's so important? Uh, uh, why is this guy so important? Tariq al Baghdad, Tariq Baghdad. Well, I mean, uh, uh, these guys is almost like in a class of their own. You have Al Khatib, uh, you have Al Tabari, you have Al Qurtubi, you have I mean, th these guys were well attested for their knowledge for their uh, writings, in this case, writing a history. And that's extremely important. And Baghdad is a big deal for the Abbasid, of course, uh, uh, you know, dynasty and so on and so forth. And it was during that time of the Abbasids, everything that began to take shape and form of being written down, technically speaking. So exactly. So so uh, so he's mentioning Al-Khatib, right? Right. He's mentioning him and he is very important, guys. I want you to to to. Um, Basically, memorize two names, Al Khatib, and the other guy is Al Atshi that we're going to see he under. So continue, brother. And guys, I need you to focus. Continue and uh, uh, please uh, translate. Yeah. So uh, then it proceeds here to say Muhammad bin Ali bin Al Hassan Abu Bakr al Mukri. Haddatha, he stated or narrated from Mahmoud ibn Khadash and from Muhammad ibn Amr, and from Ibn Abi Madhur, and they narrated from him, meaning Ahmad ibn Kamil al-Qadi, and from Muhammad ibn Ahmad ibn Yahya al-Atshi. This is okay. the one that uh, my brother wants to focus yeah. on. Guys, and from now on, guys, the whole story is about this guy, al-Atshi. Uh, Muhammad bin Ahmad bin Yahya al-Atshi. This guy is the main problem, the main cause, basically, in the chain, right, in the Senate. So here Al Albani, guys, is going to talk about Al Atshi. Al Atshi is the main problem for the satanic verses in this Mursal Hadith. So, brother, I, I want the audience to focus here. Guys, basically what Sheikh Al Bani say, is do, going to do, Sheikh Al Albani, in his book on this page, page 17, he's going to talk about Al Atshi. And he already mentioned, uh, and he's going to force words in the mouth of Al-Khatib, Baghdadi, right? He's going to force words, what he did not say, and I'm going to prove it. And he's going to lie about Al-Atshi, who is in the chain, in the Senate. Continue, brother. Yeah, then it says, uh, then uh, he brought to him uh, one hadith, and it was mentioned... Uh, you know, by someone who has this title, Abi Harb, the father of war. And then he says, I do not know really if it was his own um, kind of like nickname, uh, another nickname for him, or his name was corrupted, corrupted when it was being copied or printed. Uh -huh. Then he proceeded. So brother, just a second, yeah, yeah. just a second, brother. Guys, yeah. so basically what Al Albani is saying in his book, he says, we don't know who al Atshi is, right? That's what he basically is saying. Is he trustworthy? Is he a liar? Is he a, a, a fabricator? Uh, is he a good guy? We don't know. He's basically a John Doe. That's what he's basically saying. Continue, brother. Yeah, so so I just want to clarify to people, here's what's going on. They, they tend usually, when they want to change a narrative, they start picking and choosing and looking just for one hole. And say, yes, oh, exactly. yeah. we don't know who Alachi is. I mean, it's possible that it's a different person now. Amazing. These things were accepted for hundreds of years, but this, the minute you start <laughs> bringing your hammer on it, 
exactly. somehow everything comes loose. That's amazing. Yeah. All so right, brother, so said, yeah. Let ahead. us focus on Al Atshi and let us see more what is being said by Sheikh Al Albani. This is Sheikh Al Albani talking, right? In his book. Yeah, exactly. Let us see what he's going to say about Al Atshi. And I'm going to use, guys, Sheikh Al Albani dug a huge hole for himself, a huge hole. And he's going, I'm, I am going to push him inside the hole and bury him today. I'm going to bury Sheikh Al Albani by his own claim, using his own claim against him in the court of law, proving that he's a scumbag, a liar and deceiver who fabricates lies, forcing words in the mouth of Al-Khatib and lying about al -Achi. Watch, guys. Continue, yes. brother. So Al-Albani is saying, he, so he doesn't know this name. It could have been that it's a corrupt name. Then he says, he basically stated or storied uh, uh, Al-Khatib from al achi meaning al khatib narrated or reported to us from this guy al achi that he says uh died uh in the year uh 300 300 yeah, yeah. so 300 hijri i'm sure that's what he means 300 mm -hmm. after the time of muhammad and did not mention any problems or corrections so he is an unknown and he is the problem of this. Wait, 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 brother. So, so what is Al Atshi? What is Al Atshi? What is the Atshi? What is he, according to Sheikh Al Albani? Unknown. He's a John Doe. He's an unknown guy. Yes, so, this is unknown. why. So, basically, this is the reason why Al Atshi is the reason why the Isnad is not to be trusted. It's a fabrication. That's the whole idea. Exactly. Of, that's the whole point of Sheikh Al Albani. So he's saying we don't know who Al Achi is. He's a John Doe. He he's a, he's anonymous. We don't know who he is. He's unknown. So that's why we have to throw away this hadith and mark it as a Mursal hadith, fabricated hadith. That's the whole point. And continue reading, brother. And yeah, especially I, I, the I last wanna, part. I want to say something yeah. here, uh, Rob. And and I think people need to really pay close attention to what's going on. Al-Albani is pointing to you something that we use all the time as apologists, especially uh, concerning the origin of Islam and Hadith, and my brother here does the same. He said he died 300 years after the time of Muhammad. You know where he's going with this, right? He's yeah. saying, oh, he didn't live at the time of Muhammad. Well, thank you, Al-Albani, because my brother here have done a lot of videos. In fact, he and I will do more, uh, Lord willing, about no other than Hafs, Hafs, who didn't even exist at the time of Muhammad, didn't live at the time of Muhammad, who has a lot of problems uh, when it came to his character. And myself and Jay also did a number of shows about the Qiraat conundrum. And also, you have Ibn Ishaq, who wrote 130 years after the time of Muhammad and most of his biographies lost. Then you have Ibn Hisham, 180 years after the time of Muhammad and most of his biography was fabricated by the admission of many of Muslims, his, uh, his contemporary. Then you have Al-Bukhari, 240 years after the time of Muhammad. Then you have Al-Tabari, 300 plus years later. Then you have Ibn Kathir that many love to use, except whenever we put him in a corner like yesterday with this guy that we had on the show, me and Sam. Somehow Ibn Kathir was okay one time, not okay <laughs> the other, 700 plus years later. Ibn Taymiyyah, almost another, uh, you know, 600, 700 years later. What an amazing argument, you know, that when we say these guys wrote later, everybody laughs at it. But now uh, Al-Albani is not laughing. He's making yeah. a good argument about the fact that he was 300 years later. Yeah. And brother, here's the problem, and especially the last part of the uh, of the highlighted part in, on this page, page 17. And I, guys, I see people talk about all kinds of things in the chat. Please focus. We are doing huge damage. We are exposing Sheikh Al-Albani. I'm going to bury him in the same hole that he dug for himself. I'm going to push him in and, and cover him with sand. And here is why. Because someone like him who made his job, right? Who made his job to call things that historical uh, scholars or, or, or basically classical scholars used to believe in, right? They, they used to believe in the satanic verses. But this modern guy came and said, no, no, it's a fabrication. Watch. Brother Lee, read this last part and translate from Wahua. So he says, and he, this Albani saying, speaking about Al Atshi, he says, and he is, and I'm going to say it in Arabic, Wahua illatu hadal isnad al mausul. He is the problem in this continued narration. Wow. Can you please 
repeat that and I want everybody to listen carefully because this is the point of my whole argument against Sheikh Al Albani and against the lie that they say it's a fabrication. The satanic versus fabrication. Yeah. Why? Brother, please, I wanna, I wanna, please again. Yeah. Uh, I want to, a second, I want to give a, a shout out to Koredi. Koredi, you and I need to connect, bro. I'm sorry we haven't been able to do so, but uh, we definitely need to correct. So thank you so much for uh, making time for us here. Uh, I just wanted to catch him before he left. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to repeat it again. The word illa, problem, basically. He, meaning, problem, yeah. Yeah. Al -Atshi is the problem for this chain of narration. Exactly. So he is the problem. He is the one. That's why, because of him, we need to reject and call the satanic verses of this particular isnad, we have to call it fabrication. So Sheikh Al Albani is calling, al he's throwing Al Atshi and he's throwing Al Khatib under the bus, right? To just, you know, uh, sugarcoat this disaster, which is the satanic, historical satanic versus incident in the life of Muhammad. So he's saying he is the problem. Al Atshi is the problem in the chain, basically, right, brother? Can you confirm? Yeah, yeah. And, and here's the problem, brother. Amazingly, Al Albani, 1300 years later, he can decide if the guy who was 300 years closer to Muhammad was good or not good, valid exactly. or not valid, authentic exactly. or not authentic. What a hypocrisy. Exactly. So, guys, just to summarize what Sheikh Al Albani said on page 17, and uh, uh, guys, look how much time I'm putting in this, in my slide, just to expose these liars and deceivers like Sheikh Al Albani, like this deceiver, right? For everybody to see, because we are here, we are spending time to help those Muslims out of this cult. We cannot save them because only God can, but we can help them, showing them what kind of liars their heroes and their shiuch are today, who are too embarrassed, simply too embarrassed like Sheikh Al Albani, that Muhammad actually did deliver satanic verses. Here's the summary, guys, in page on page 17 of his book, Nasb al Majaniq li Nasb Qissat al Gharaniq. That's the book title of Sheikh Al Albani. And my summary Al Albani in his book saying, is saying that Al Khatib al Baghdadi, that's his number one claim, mentioned or talked about Al Atshi, as we read, and as the brother translated for you. Al Atshi died in the year 300. And he did not say, so uh, Al Khatib did not say, the hadith is da'if or sahih, and he did not say that he's a fabricator about al Achi or a liar or a trustworthy person. No, no, he did not say anything about him. That's the number one claim. Guys, and I want you to focus. He's forcing words in the mouth of Al-Khatib al-Baghdadi, right? Who wrote Tarikh Baghdad. Who wrote Tarikh Baghdad. Highly, highly, highly respected scholar in Islam, right? So that's the claim number one from Sheikh al-Albani. So he's the one making claims. Claim number two, if we continue reading, the problem in the chain of this hadith is Muhammad bin Ahmed bin Yahya al atshi So he's calling him, right? You heard the brother reading the Arabic. He is the cause. He's the problem. That's the claim number two. So he's throwing al atshi under the bus and he's forcing words in the mouth of Al-Khatib al-Baghdadi who wrote Tarikh Baghdad, that book. And he continues saying, Al-Albani himself, the liar and deceiver claims the following. He claims that this guy, Al Atshi, is a John Doe. <laughs> and I put, uh, you know, people who know me, you know, I like sometimes to put jokes in between. So he calls him basically a John Doe. No one knows who he is. Al Albani is the one making this claim on page 17 of his book, as we explained to you. The person behind the whole satanic verses report hadith in this chain is an unknown guy, basically. That's the claim of Sheikh Al-Albani. So in other words, the story about Al-Gharaniq is a, a fabrication, life, according to Al-Albani, because the one narrating the hadith is a John Doe, an unknown guy. And who is that guy? Is al -Atshi. Yeah. Let's 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 use logic. Right? Somehow, the rest of the chain was okay, except when we got to this guy. And because it's morsel, so if that was a fabrication, don't you think the person who fabricated it could have just added a name of one of the companions, Abu Huraira, you know, 
Omar. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, is it that hard really to fabricate? I mean, even Bukhari admitted that there were hadith collections that there were fabrications and he did not include him in his own collection. So, so what's the yeah. big deal? Yeah. Guys, here's the here's the way to destroy and bury Sheikh Al-Albani's lies and deception. And this is why and today's live show guys is a lesson to any Muslim. A lesson to any Christian. Never ever trust a modern sheikh, especially like Al-Albani. When they say something, they need to lie to cover up the disaster that Muhammad created in Islam. And in this case, the satanic verses. And I'm going to destroy him today because he made at least two claims, right? We showed you the claims. He's forcing words inside the mouth of Al-Khatib Al-Baghdadi, who wrote Tarikh Baghdad. That's claim number one. And claim number two, he is, he is throwing al atshi under the bus just for the sake of argument that the satanic verses is a fabrication he's calling him an unknown guy a john doe right and someone is saying a john doe like the uh, like abdullah uh, supposedly the father of muhammad yes that kind of john doe so let us do our homework with the which the muslims do not do <laughs> i didn't do my homework yeah muslimin did you do your homework did you i'm sure you did are you using Google? May peace be upon him. Yes, uh, it's okay to you. You know, Prophet Google, peace be upon him, at least answers, yeah. and he is helping us doing our homework, which I tell Muslims people. don't do. <laughs> I mean, I tell him, you know, all you have to do is ask Siri, may peace be upon her, to Google for you, and she will find you magic. Uh, stuff, you know? uh, guys, guys, that's a good one. So, see, you, you see here in front of uh, of you, brother. Here's a website that I went through to to understand. Who is this Al, Al Atshi? Is he uh, is he a truly an anonymous guy? Is he a John Doe, as a Sheikh Al Albani claims? Is Sheikh Al Albani lying? Maybe is he lying to save the Ummah from drowning, right? To try to cover up those holes, those giant holes, to to stuff them with lies so that uh, the boat will not sink further. Watch, guys. Watch how I'm going to bury for the glory of Christ. Watch how I'm going to bury Sheikh Al Albani. He and his lies in a, in that same hole that he dug for himself. Sheikh Al Albani created a disaster for himself and the Ummah. Watch, brother. Can you read on the screen what it says here? Yes. Uh, information concerning the narrator. All and right. then it says concerning the life of the narrator. The name uh -huh. is. Muhammad bin, bin by the way means the son of Muhammad uh, bin Ahmad bin Yahya bin Abdullah bin Ismail, who's also known as Muhammad bin Ahmad al Atshi. Al oh, the same guy, al Atshi, right? Yeah. Yep. Guys, yep. we're going to basically dissect, we're going to do some homework about who al Atshi is. And, and he is known, he's known, yeah. if I may keep reading, he's known as Abu Ali, meaning the father of Ali. That's standard, by the way, in the Middle East. If you have a son, they'll call you by the name of your oldest. And sometimes people don't have even sons, and they somehow pick that kind of like nickname. But most likely, that's the name of his son. Look what it says. So what is his uh, uh, nasab, meaning, uh, you know, title, heritage, uh, you know, family, basically, name is al Atshi al-Baghdadi, which means he was in Baghdad. So... Yes. Definitely, Al Khatib Al Baghdadi would know about someone from his own town. Ah, did you catch it? Now the puzzle pieces are fitting their places. From now on, we're going to bury Sheikh Al Albani. He and his lies. Watch. Now here comes the, the damaging part, brother. Need, yeah. Read the next part. The next part that is underlined uh, with red. It says a rutba, meaning like his status. Uh, the status, status what? guys. The status of Al Atshi himself. What does it say? Yeah, status of this particular narrator, according to the studies that were done uh, by him, his classification. It's almost like when you say hadith sahih or daif. Now, what do you say about this narrator? Here's what it says: Thiqa ma'moon, trustworthy and safe, trustworthy wow. and reliable. Allahu Akbar. <laughs> so, guys, uh, go to any website like this 
and you'll see that Al Achi is a trustworthy. We know who he is. We know even his his kunya. We know his uh, last name. We know where he's from. We know he's from Al from Baghdad. We know that he's trustworthy. He's not an unknown. He's not unknown, as Sheikh Al Bani said. Bam. So again. If we translate, just maybe your option is lying. Maybe a uh, brother Al-Fadi is not translating correctly. Look what it says on the screen. Again, brother, what does it say? Thiqa, Ma'moon, safe, trust, trustworthy, reliable, uh, all these uh, things. Like trustworthy. So al achi is a trustworthy. But wait, Shaykh Al-Albani on page 17 called him what? He called him unknown. <laughs> He called That's him right. the problem in the chain because we don't know who he is. He's anonymous, right? That's what Sheikh Al-Bani said. <laughs> so in other words, guys, al achi turns out to be a trustworthy, well-known guy in Islam. Wow! Do you see how I just destroyed Sheikh Al-Bani, guys? Do you see how I just destroyed Sheikh Al-Bani? Brother, do you want to add something just to clarify? Uh, not at all, brother. I mean, it's it's a classic uh, contradiction style that you see, especially lately, folks. You have the traditional Muslims. Who, by the way, by the way, I want to be very, very uh, clear here. Based on our studies and most recent discoveries, I can assure you of this: earlier Muslims are more trustworthy, and you can rely on their sources and their material because they were straightforward, open-minded. They never actually attempted to do anything aside from what is reality. Here's what I mean. If there was a problem in narrating the Quran, they will say it. If there is a problem in pronouncing something, they will state it for you. If there is a disagreement on translating or interpreting something, they will state it. Modern Muslims now are trying to rewrite history, and that's the sad reality. Yeah. So guys, we just destroyed Sheikh Al Albani, because Sheikh Al Albani threw Al Achi under the bus, saying that he is the problem in the chain. He is un anonymous. We don't know who he is. We don't know if he's trustworthy, etc. Et and he's forcing words in the mouth of who? Al Khatib Al Baghdadi. He is calling Al Khatib Al Baghdadi a liar and deceiver too. Oh boy! Now here is here is my evidence number two to bury. Shaykh al Albani even further, right? Watch. This is the book of who, brother? <laughs> this who is, is basically <laughs> Tarikh Baghdad. Tarikh okay. Baghdad, which is Al Khatib. Al Khatib. Al -Khatib. Al -Khatib. Yeah. Guys, well, how to prove better than just to go to the book of the guy? Yeah, that no, no, guy no. that he mentioned. <laughs> yeah, let me let me say this. This was so interesting. The title for al-Baghdadi is this, al-Imam, which is a big deal. That means you are really a scholar. Al-Hafidh, you know why? He memorizes things. So somehow, mm. al-Albani had a problem with his memory. Wow, that's amazing. Wow. wow. So guys, I'm going to go to the book, and it's on the screen for you, right? I'm going to go with you to the book of al-Khatib al-Baghdadi, we're going to go through his book, Tarikh Baghdad, highly famous in Islam, volume one. This is, It's on the screen, right? This is Tarikh, again, Tarikh Baghdad by Al-Khatib, right? Al-Hafiz, al <laughs> the, the giant of giants, Al-Khatib Al-Baghdadi. Let me show you how Al-Khatib Al-Baghdadi is going to destroy Sheikh Al-Bani al with me and prove that Al-Achi is a reliable guy. Again, we already proved it. But we're going to prove it from a second source, in this case, Tarikh Baghdad. And brother, I want you to translate. Here is the page, the same page from the book Tarikh Baghdad by Al Khatib Al Baghdadi. Page number 396. 396 in the Arabic. Sorry, guys, it, the book is not translated. I, I, I think it's not translated because I could not find it in English. So, brother, I want you to read for me and translate and mention all the names that we can find on this page and read and translate from now on from here, brother. This is Al-Khatib. This is Al-Khatib in his book. Al-Khatib Al-Baghdadi, watch. Yeah, so uh, here it's this section of the book 342, 342, the, the one that is underlined, folks. It says, 
Muhammad ibn Ahmad ibn Yahya ibn Abdullah ibn Ismail Abu Ali al-Bazzaz al-Atshi. Who? Al-Atshi. <laughs> Al the same, same guy. Al-Atshi, same guy. So yeah. what is uh, Al-Khatib? What is Al-Khatib al-Baghdad is going to say about him? Watch, guys. Yeah. So I'm going gonna, uh, I'm gonna to start translating here. For, folks, I'm translating on, on a... Uh, focus, guys. Yeah, focus, yeah. please. So yeah. um, Ja'far ibn Muhammad al-Firyani heard and also Abu Ya'la al-Mousali from Mosul, basically, and Muhammad ibn Salih ibn Darih al-Akbari, and Muhammad ibn Jarir al-Tabari, big deal, al-Tabari. Al-Tabari himself, the Kram okay. al-Kram, right? The Tafsir yeah. daddy of Tafsir daddies, exactly, that guy. Yeah, so yeah, I'm going to skip some of the names, and yeah. Muhammad ibn Muhammad al-Baghindi, and you keep going all the yeah. way to Abu Bakr ibn Dawood al-Sujistani. Who is that ibn guy? Ibn Dawood <laughs> al-Sujistani is extremely important. I'm doing studies right now in the manuscripts of the Quran, and yeah. this guy wrote about the Qira'at, the various yeah. Qurans, technically speaking. It's the same guy who wrote Sunnah Nabi Daud. That's that right. guy. <laughs> that That's guy. Right. That that guy. That uh, Ibn Daud, right? That guy right. who wrote Sunnah Nabi Daud. So yeah. So, and continue so his son, his son Ibn Abi Daud, is yeah. a big deal for Quranic manuscripts. So that's what yes. I wanted to say. Yes. So hadathana anhu, meaning stated to us or narrated to us uh, uh, from Abu Abdullah Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahid wal Hasan, and keep going, keep going, keep going until you die reading. Yeah. And, then said, yeah. <laughs> and then I yeah. And then and I asked I asked Al Khalal concerning him, meaning concerning Al Achi. This is what he said. Yes, he is this Achi. trustworthy. So here's what's going on. Al Khatib Al Baghdadi did his homework. That's what he's saying. Yes, yes, yes. So guys, do you see how Sheikh Al Albani just lied about Al Khatib Al Baghdadi? He lied about al achi because al achi seems, it seems that all these people know him. And uh, right here, a Sajistani, a giant, a tabari, all of them, they know him and they call him who, what, what do they call him again, brother? Thiqa, trustworthy. He is trustworthy. Turns out that Sheikh al-Albani is nothing but a liar, a deceiver who wrote a book, right? Who wrote his book just to lie. He wrote just to lie. He's nothing but a hypocrite, a liar and deceiver because he wants to lie about the authenticity, right, of the satanic versus incident that happened, truly happened in the life of Muhammad. So in the end, Sheikh al-Albani is nothing but a liar and deceiver who lied about the Isnad. It seems that the guy in the Isnad turns out to be, according to Tariq Baghdad, the book, and the writer of the book, Al-Khatib al-Baghdadi, turns out to, <laughs> that this guy is highly trustworthy, highly trustworthy. Giants call him trustworthy. So he, they know who he is. He is to be trusted. So it turns out that the Isnad that goes back to the satanic verses, turns out that it's Sahih. <laughs> Bam! <laughs> and that's how to expose Sheikh Al-Bani and destroy him for everybody to see, guys. That's how to do it. So do you see how modern scholars, do you see how modern scholars, like this liar, this deceiver, this scambag, this scammer that you see here on the screen, Muhammad Nasruddin Al-Bani, modern scholars came to lie because they are simply too embarrassed. How is it possible? How can we accept that Muhammad delivered satanic verses? So let us invent some fabrications, let us write some books, fabricate books, lies in the, our books, like Sheikh Al-Albani, to lie about Islam, to lie about the Prophet of Islam, because if Muhammad would have been, al been alive today, he would have not objected against the satanic verses. Brother, what do you want to say after this spanking of Sheikh Al-Albani today? Oh, uh, I mean, uh... There is nothing really to say. All we did here today is just a very simple approach, and that's to show how a later Islamic scholar rewrite history. Then we need to understand why our Muslim friends keep evolving their interpretation, or as David Wood, may peace be upon him, says, the miracle of reinterpretation. Uh, that's exactly what's going on. Exactly. So you see, 
Sheikh Al Albani turns out to, out to be a liar and deceiver because the classical scholars like Ibn Taymiyyah, Sheikh Al Islam, Ibn Taymiyyah, they did accept that the satanic verses was a historical fact. The, histor the satanic verses is a historical fact, but modern day scholars like this scumbag, Sheikh Al Albani is nothing but a liar and deceiver. And that's how the cookie crumbles, guys. This is how to bury this liar, this deceiver, who made his book famous in the Muslim Sunni world, that, uh, brother, uh, the satanic verse incident is nothing but uh, a fabrication. No, today we proved him wrong, we buried him, and do you see, whenever these shuyukh, whenever these modern scholars write books, they create another disaster because they have to protect the ummah. The ummah from sinking. I remember what Sheikh, uh, uh, the, 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 the famous Sheikh from Canada said. A tsunami, a tsunami. An avalanche is coming our way. And it will knock us over. That guy, right? That guy. And he knows why. Because when you do your homework, ya Muslimin, we do not hate you. When we do your homework that you yourself do not know, we will find such damaging, damaging things. Damaging facts about your modern scholars who need to lie and cover up, cover up the historical facts. Muhammad truly did deliver satanic verses, and today's live show should cause a huge chain reaction. And I want everybody who is watching to share this live show, to let it go viral, because this video just destroyed Sheikh Al Albani and will destroy any modern Sheikh who need to lie about the historicity of the satanic verses. Thank you, brother. Thank you for Absolutely. allowing me. You want me to, to stop the sharing? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So that was fantastic, my brother. Uh, as always, uh, solid research. Um, uh, my job is to always help my brothers here in terms of uh, uh, providing support to the authenticity of the research confirmation to the research because we know why i mean our muslim friends gonna start attacking him or attack jay or attack sam or attack so while i know these things i love for my brother to be the one who is sharing it because i want to show also the rest of you that it, it is doable if you put your mind into it and you can find the information i get it that people get discouraged that it's in arabic you know what we need a lot of people to do research on things like this uh, to translate things like this. So pray for us. It's one of my heart's desire is to raise enough funding to take sources like this and have some entities translate them for us uh, at a very fast speed so that we can have a lot of these resources. So it is not easy, but uh, we need to do it because we want these resources to be available to all of you. I get your frustration. Many of you were saying, well, it's in Arabic. It's no good to us. I'm sorry. I, it's sad state of affair. I get it. But that's why we do these shows for you folks, because we want to help you. That's why my brother labors in showing you the Arabic and then translating it. Why? Because we know we're going to get accused. Oh, that's the Arabic. Never said that. Well, okay. You were showing you the Arabic. Now what are yeah. you going to say about it? Exactly. And that, you, know, you know, you know, folks, I want to share, share another sad reality. Not all Muslims know the Arabic that we just shared anyway. So they're in the same boat like you. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And you see, uh, guys, today's live show is another proof. Without lies of the Muslim scholars, especially the modern scholars, Islam dies. They need to write books, fabricate lies in their books, trying to cover up the disasters that their fake prophet Muhammad created for them. The satanic verses did happen. It is a historical fact. But today's scholars need to lie about it, need to call it fabrication, because simply it gives them a huge disaster, right? Because how can, how can the final prophet, how can Muhammad, the seal of all the prophets, fell for the tricks of Satan, delivering satanic verses to the pagans of Quraysh. How is it possible, right? Exactly. But, and by the way, Koredi is uh, uh, mentioning that it was uh, Sheikh Bilal Phillips who said that an avalanche yes. is coming. And and Koredi, um, uh, you know, you showed us a book about understanding the historical Jesus. So I bought the book. You owe me money, bro. I spend money because you said that that book is good. So by uh, Daryl Bach. I'm just kidding, Koredi. So yeah. uh, all that to say is uh, Koredi is an amazing apologist, by the way, from Nigeria. Lord bless his heart. We were talking about you the other day, me and Jay. 
So I'm sure your ears were uh, uh, basically uh, ringing. Mm -hmm. So brother, um, what's the next project? Uh, we want to do more and more of this, obviously, but I want to yeah. bring you, like I said, in the fall to do a, a video series. But what's the next project for you and your channel? And what are the things that uh, hopefully we can come back and talk about? I like the idea of talking about the second satanic incident uh, in yes. chapter 30, Surat so Room. Yes, uh, we can bring that up. Uh, uh, actually, guys, for the people who do not know, uh, brother Al Fadi and I would have uh, made uh, a live show today about totally something else. But to, I, 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 uh, I sent a message to our brother here. I told him I found new material about the satanic verses and I really need to present it. And, uh, I, you know, you see, it's, it's amazing. Actually, uh, a shout out to brother Sam Shamoon because Muslims think that Sam Shamoon and I are enemies or something. No, brother Sam Shamoon is a dear brother of mine, and he's actually the one who motivated me to do research, to take a huge dive, like Yasser Qadi, right? Take a huge dive in the Islamic Arabic books to find these disasters. So he is the one uh, who made, motivated me. I had a, a recent conversation with him on Skype, and he told me to go to Ibn Taymiyyah and uh, go to uh, Ibn Hajar and so on. But today, you see, today I didn't even need those two giants to expose modern scholars like Sheikh al-Albani. Today, I ended Sheikh al-Albani's career and proved to everybody, to any Christian, to any Muslim, to any atheist who's watching, that Sheikh al-Albani is nothing but a liar, a deceiver, who needs to cover up and lie about the true, authentic story, which is the satanic versus incident in the life of Muhammad. Thank you for having me, brother. Uh, by the way, I sent the link. I sent the yes, link uh, that it. you can share. Yeah. Yeah, Perfect. I posted uh, for if everybody. If you want to download, yeah. Uh, so next time uh, we'll do the Tawheed. Uh, so we have two projects, you and I at least, to do the Tawheed, uh, the, you know, uh, dilemma again, and uh, the oneness of God and the word Ahad and many other things. And then we want to revisit the second satanic uh, one because I don't think anyone have done uh, an extensive work on it yet. So let's be the pioneers on that. And then you and I can uh, plan other things. But then in the fall, uh, which is in about two months from now, Lord willing, I would love yeah. to have you at least join us remotely in our studios because we're doing some uh, modifications in there to allow people to join us remotely, but to appear as if you are with us at the same time because we want to do a lot of this work, brother, and we want to, uh, you're a blessing to the kingdom and we want people to know about you, your work. And at the same time, uh, we this is the least we can do is to do things like this and give these videos back to you as well because you are free to always share it on your own channel. This is one of the things, folks, that we like to do with our speakers is not only we like them to join us and we do video series, but we want them to gladly download and even repost and publish uh, those videos in their own channel. At the end of the day, it's not for us. It's for everyone uh, to benefit from. Last words, brother. Yeah, uh, again, uh, some, I see some people in the live chat are, are asking about Surat al -Rum. So basically, the less uh, 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 known incident, this, uh, basically, I showed everybody. Maybe I can just, again, brother, before we uh, wrap this up, can I share my screen again for the second time, if that's possible? You can, but we okay. want to do a show on it. So just yeah. do a teaser. Yeah, yeah. Right I'm not going to. Gonna... Yeah, no teasers. Let's, guys, let's just, make yeah. it a priority. So next yeah. time, let's you and I connect and see when can you come back and let's do that one. Sure. So basically, we're going to talk about, let's see, where did I put it? Uh, uh, do you see the screen, guys? I hope the screen is showing. Uh, not yet, brother. Okay. When, when you when you share it, yeah. I'll, I'll uh, post it. Yeah. I th uh, I think uh, let's see share screen share screen okay okay so this is the uh, the for the people just uh, a small uh, introduction yeah, so about I what we're now going everybody to talk can about. see it yeah. so guys again and I already talked about it in the beginning of our live show there are two major incidents that I myself found right especially the second one so basically the most famous one is as you know surat uh, a Najm that happened, right? Muhammad was reciting Surah An Najm, and then Satan comes in between and give, delivers the satanic verses on the tongue of Muhammad, and then Muhammad gives it to the pagan Quraysh. But many people don't know about Surah Al Rum, so I'm not going to talk about it today. I'm not going to show you slides because I have information about the less more known satanic incident in the life of Muhammad. That's Surah Al Rum. And we're going to talk about yeah. it another time. Brother. And the purpose, of course, is very simple. 
Yasser Qadi, who was honest enough to say that there were holes in the narrative, our job is to widen these holes. That's all we're doing. You know, <laughs> the, the, when you start widening the holes, these holes connect and become a big hole. Which, by the way, in honor of Yasser Qadi's hole in the narrative, myself and a guest will be talking about that at the anniversary, which is the 8th of June, next Tuesday. So you don't want to miss that, uh, folks, because we definitely want to keep this memory alive for as long as we can. Mm -hmm. Okay, my brother. Well, uh, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for everything that you do. We appreciate mm -hmm. you. And um, uh, obviously, we want people to always subscribe to your channel. What is the name of your channel, just in case people don't know? Uh, you just can uh, use the search engine, search for Rob Christian, and you will find me. Uh... Yeah. Subscribe to his channel, please. Uh, support his ministry. The brother sticks his neck out there and does a lot of things, uh, despite the fact that there is a huge risk on his life. No wonder he doesn't like to show his face. And we support that because we do not want a warrior like him to be harmed or attacked uh, because of the amazing work that he's doing. So be praying for him all the time. Uh, and uh, no... Uh, is one of the uh, amazing warriors in our team, meaning the team that we're all in. And the Lord is our leader, of course. So thank you so much, brother, for all the work that you do. I am honored you. that uh, you always come uh, to bless us with this knowledge in our channel. And hopefully people will be blessed by it as well. Thank you. Thank you again for having me, dear brother, uh, Al-Fadi. Uh, God bless your ministry, your family, your loved ones, and everyone who was here. Uh, the audience, uh, admins who are always doing an amazing job. Guys, please allow this video to go viral. Shared everywhere because a lot of Muslims are putting their salvation and their souls on the line because of people like Sheikh Al Albani who we destroy today without any mercy because such people, such deceivers deserve no respect and they must be exposed for everybody to see. And we are only here because we love the Muslims. That's why we are doing this. We don't hate you Muslims, please. We love you. You are our brothers and sisters in humanity. Please don't allow any modern scholar to deceive you. Or your fake prophet who became at that day, at that moment, he became the prophet of Satan when he delivered the satanic verse. It's sahih. It's not da'if. Today we prove that. Please download our videos. And thank you for having me again, brother. God bless you. Amen. And I just was in wrapping next week. We're going to have uh, uh, two shows at least, uh, plus possibly Sam Shimon and I will do our usual uh, Q&A live. And uh, one will be uh, to uh, commemorate uh, the uh, holes in the narrative. Uh, another one uh, with Jay Smith, because me and Jay, uh, during the week of the 16th and the 17th of June, we will be doing shows together in the studio. So we will be doing some live shows as well. Uh, we're going to give you a teaser about the stuff that we are going to talk about. So these are at least the two uh, things that I will be uh, addressing. And then we're working uh, towards having a, uh, a lineup of amazing, amazing guest speakers like my brother here to join us as well. So thank you again, brother. Thank you, everyone. Thank you to our moderators. This is Al-Fadi. Over and out. God bless.